Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee um, on the 17th of January. I've received apologies from Ben Price, Jason Jones and Rosie Claymore. Does anybody know of any more? I don't think there's many people left. <laughs> right, thank you. Um, and just a reminder that we are being recorded and it, the recording will be uploaded to YouTube. Right, um, item two then, we have minutes of three previous meetings. I'd like, if possible, to take these on block. Is anybody got anything they want to raise from it or are we happy to accept them as a true record? Have I got a mover? Lewis, and a second now. Ben, all those in favour? Lovely, thank you very much. And we will not do that again. I, well, I will try not to do that again. Right, declarations of interest. Can I ask if anyone has any interest they need to be declared? No? Thank you. Um, up, item four, updates from the chair. At this time, there are no updates. And item five, response to reports of the ISAG scrutiny committee. There are none. Item six, consideration of matters referred to the ISAG scrutiny committee from cabinet or council. There are none. So we will go on to item seven, which is the dual stream recycling service quarterly update. So I understand we've got Steve and Victoria here who are going to discuss the report of the, um, yeah, report good evening, of the Chair. operations manager. Yeah. yeah good, good evening, all. Thank you. Uh, right. Um, Steve G, operations manager for the Joint Way Service. Getting a bit of feedback there. Um, just give you an update of where we are in terms of joint waste performance, so our recycling green waste residual collections. Um, I'll start off with a positive. Uh, performance across the joint waste service is exceptionally good at the moment. Um, really, really pleasing that we are just ticking along without, I hope, too many problems that anybody's hearing about. Um, so it's all going quite well. Uh, and rounds are being completed on schedule, on time. Um, I would probably start by saying we've just gone through the busiest three weeks of the waste calendar. Uh, when I wrote this report, we were actually in the middle of it. So we've just probably had the, well, we have had the, pre, the three busiest weeks of the year with Christmas collections. Recycling rates will have gone up around about 40% in those weeks. Uh, the figures aren't out yet, so <laughs> unfortunately before this paper. Uh, but the good news for residents is that we... We, we, we basically delivered over Christmas. It was a seamless service. Um, uh, it's an anecdotal story. I walked in the office the one day and two of the lads were beating themselves up um, at the end of shift. It's like, what's up? We'd missed one call de sec. And I think that's a sign of how well that they've done that residents have had an excellent service in the, the three busiest weeks of the year. Um, I'll carry on with the good news, and, and these are genuinely good news stories. We don't work on the percentage that we collect on time because it's 99.9 .9 blah 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 something percent. So we work on the number of missed bins per month. Um, last year uh, we had an average of 497 in the period that I'm quoting. Um, November's figure, and apologies we are in November, this is just the time of the report when we had got December at the time, was 292 missed bins reported. That was the lowest of the financial year. Uh, shame that I can't bring December's figures because it was actually lower at 271. Um, the reality is that's, that's pleasing, it's quite impressive. Um, it doesn't happen by chance, it happens because the team have done a lot, a lot of work in terms of actually working on non-presented bins. We've done a lot of work on assisted collections something that we often debate that why do you miss assisted collections the numbers have come down we won't rest on our laurels we'll try to maintain it in that place the difficulty is once you get great figures how you actually keep it in that same place but but that's that's a positive um average complaints per month are at 2.1 at the moment uh, that's compared to the 6.2 in the corresponding period last year again 2.1 complaints when we're talking around about 100,000 collections a week is it's pleasing. The 6.2 figure, let's be brutally honest, was skewed somewhat by the, the, the new service with the recycling previously. 
Um, we do touch on resident participation uh, and the service is still exceptionally well used and we're still reporting figures between 98 and 99 percent participation. Um, we'll get on in a bit how we need to work to improve that, partic well, that participation but the tonnage that gets put out. Uh, garden Way service, uh, last year we had 44,000 residents sign up to the Garden Way service, 35% of those were Tamworth residents. No great surprise in terms, they just take the demographic of the two areas. Litchfield tends to have more leafy garden areas, Tamworth is, is urban. Uh, numbers are a little bit slow this year. Um, I've reported a figure of 14,551 signed up so far this year. Um, it's now just over 15,000. That is slightly down on last year, but we also did launch late. Uh, the reason we launched late, or later, and we didn't launch until early December, is because we introduced direct debits as an option for customers. Um, there are pros and cons on that, but what we can say is we're actually giving greater customer choice to individuals. So if you want to sign up for a Greenway service in the Joint Way service as a Tamworth resident, you've got a choice of a direct debit or a card payment. Uh, currently, around about 9%, it's just over 9% of people have taken the direct debit option. We'll look to see how... Um, how that develops. Um, we've looked at contaminated bins for our performance and the number of contaminated bins again is, is lower than last year so we're down about 1,470 per month against an average of 2,515 the previous year. We do work on the number of contaminated bins and we do look to to address the issues, um, either by tagging and then going out and seeing residents. Um, some of the areas in contaminated bins are town with issues around flats, but we do work with landlords, we do work with uh, residents in those properties to try to stop the, um, the contamination. Again, for anybody who may be uh, slightly unsure of the reasons, contaminated bins lead to contaminated loads. Contaminated loads, realistically, get to the MRF, where, where the, the, the material recycling site, get rejected because it's got contamination in. You know, you might have put some, some rubbish in with your paper, you might have put oh, dusty sand paper in with your plastics. If a load gets rejected, it's around about £3,000 a shot, so that's why we will actually turn it away rather than accept that we, that we empty them. But again, 1,470 versus 2,500 the previous year is, is a good news story. Um, we still talk about the quality of the material, uh, which in reality is one of the reasons why Andrew previously went along and, and we changed the service to a dual stream. It was to improve the quality. I sound like a stuck record, I think it's the fourth time I've said it at this meeting, that we've only had one rejected load since this service went live. Um, versus the regular occurrence under the last system, that is a huge success. Um, I'm hoping at some point we'll be having the 12 month period so we haven't had a rejected load at all, but let's touch wood. Um, contamination that has been reported, because every load that goes into the, um, the MRF, we do get a percentage of breakdown of what product's in there. Uh, the, contamina rate, no, the contamination rate has increased slightly to 3.14% against 2.93%. It can be one load that's skewed it, but what you do is as soon as you start to get loads and percentages going up, you start keeping an eye just to make sure you haven't got a trend that's developing. Uh, Fibre still reported at 0% contamination, uh, which is a sign that the product that we're collecting is being accepted at the, at the paper mills and is going to good juice. Off the record, I don't believe it is 0% contamination because that's impossible, but... Um, what a great achievement, really, really good figure. Um, tonnages, um, and there are a lot of graphs that are attached to this report. Please, I, I do say that when you have five minutes or ten minutes and you actually start to go through them, there's a lot of really good data in there. Uh, but if I was to go through graph by graph by graph, it's going to be a long night. Um, it, 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 it's quite dull, but there's a lot of really useful information in there that's worth, worth absorbing. Uh, the general trends and a couple of the highlights to pick out, um, residual waste is at an average of 3,100 tonnes per month. That's slightly up on um, 3,051 tonnes in 23, uh, but down on the COVID year of 21-22. Uh, 
Uh, it's worth being aware that the tonnage has gone up because the aim that we're actually looking for is to produce less waste. Okay, there is more residents or more household properties than there were, but the real target should always be about waste. Waste, not waste, um, not producing waste in the first place so that we can um, so, so, so we keep that, that tonnage that goes to uh, energy from waste to, to a minimum. Recycling rates, a um, little bit skewed because it's mid-year, but they do look very positive. So it's 44.42% uh, for the Joint Waste Service and 40.88% for Tamworth. So Tamworth's gone over 40% for the first time in a, a period. Um, in 21-22, Tamworth was at 39.75%. 22 23 dropped to 35.72%. So, as a, as a standout figure, 40.88% sounds very positive. Um, I will come back to one of the reasons on that, because it, it, it is skewed by the fact that garden waste falls off a part. Of, um, garden waste is, is collected during the summer months, so it puts the tonnage of recycling up. Garden waste drops off, and that recycling rate will come down. But in comparable quarters to last year, we're still on, a, we're, we're still on par. Um, dry recycling again with, we are slightly down in terms of total tonnage 1,230 versus 1,266 tonnes in the previous years does follow a national trend does link into that figure we just mentioned earlier about the fact that residual waste has gone up slightly um, I will come on to it in a moment because that's where we can be proactive and we can try to improve the performance of the joint waste service moving forward. The dry recycling rate, so this is not including the green waste, just pure dry recycling rate, um, just over 20% for the joint waste service and 21.34% for Tamworth Borough Council. Similar to what I said about the, the garden waste figures, they do get skewed because of it being a percentage not including garden waste. But uh, if you've followed that, the reality is that the figures are actually slightly better than they were as a percentage last year. Um, the reason I mentioned they were slightly better than last year, but th this, is the, this is the fly in the ointment. There is a general trend of dry recycling which has fallen over, over the last few years. So compared to 22-23 rates, recycling has dropped by 18%. It's quite a significant drop. Um, various factors for it. It can be that as schemes come in place, people have got used to it. People become they have become disengaged with it, or it becomes easier just to start to throw it into the residual. Various factors. It can be the cost of living crisis, um, but the reality is that overall, all around the country, that trend has fallen. We mentioned it before, um, and we have got a, a substantial resident engagement campaign that's due to launch in the spring, uh, which is going to be used as part of a tool to actually try to increase the, improve the recycling rates. Um, Tamworth and Litchfield have both got into it jointly. It is a really good campaign. Uh, currently, we are working on sponsorship, and some has come through from some, some major players in the waste industry. Um, so the, the concept being that we will have a new scheme that will get a new, a new recycling campaign that will get launched. Um, it will be fully funded, um, so it won't cost the taxpayer any cash. It will be funded by the private sector. Um, we do need to push this campaign with our, uh, across all of us, uh, and we do look for councillor support to take that to your residents um, in order that we can try and use these tools we put in together to increase the recycling rate. Um, just to share a little bit for anybody who's not aware of what, what we're pushing on, we're pushing on various other angles and we're talking about it being led by residents who are coming up with the reasons that they recycle and you will find that some people put that down to financial reasons because it actually is cheaper for them as taxpayers. Um, so the service is cheaper, it works for that some out of moral reasons um, and you get a combination of factors about why people do it and it's trying to buy into all those psyches and all those reasons for and that's why we ask you support because I can't say anything but it is the right thing to do. Um, thank you. 
Uh, financials, again, not a bad place. Um, we always want to be in a better place, but we're not in a bad place at all. Um, so the last figures we've got of any significance, period nine has come out, but the period eight figures, which tend to give us an idea of where, where we will finish across the course of the year, uh, it's looking like the Joint Wire Service will have around about a £40,000 overspend. Um, Tamworth's share, depending on how it pans out at the end of the year, will be around about £16,000 on that. Um, while £40,000 is a, you know, to about a significant sum of money, we are against an, um, an annual expenditure of £9 million. Um, and even with the income that that brings in, we've got £3.3 .3 million cost. So £40,000 across £3.3 .3 million expenditure is, isn't bad news at all. Again, for comparison, last year the overspend was 195000 um, so, as it stands at the moment, we're looking like the outturn this year will be quite positive. General performance of the Joint Way Service, and I don't like saying this without crossing my fingers, touching wood and everything else that goes with it, we are in a really good place. Um, you've actually got, I'm only eight months, nine months into this role, but you've got a really strong team that are delivering way services to a high, to a high degree uh, in, a, in a pretty professional well, in a very professional manner. Um, I'm, I'm actually proud of the team, and I think these figures demonstrate that. It, it, they go from the problems that we had and the issues we had when the new service came in and the complaints that we got into what is now a very, very sort of uh, impressive uh, set of KPIs. Um, beyond performance, we do touch on waste projects that are going on. Uh, there's a lot of work going on in the background by various members of the teams and, and also cross-functional members of both. Lichfield and Tamworth Council. Uh, but just touching on the main things that are going on, the direct debits for garden waste subscriptions is up and running completed. There's still one or two teething problems, as you'd expect. The amount of work that Vicky and her team put into that, along with the um, various colleagues, was immense. It was a, a tricky path, but it has been delivered, it's been delivered successfully. Um, flats and the multi-occupied uh, multi properties um, and all now on the dual uh, stream recycling. That's again a large piece of work that's been done by Vicky's team. A lot of those properties are in Tamworth. Um, yeah, let's look out the window, we've got the, the, uh, the, the flats that are out there that, 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 that we do continually work on. We have had success, they've all got the service in place. We have got some that we will continue to work on and if I'm honest, I think four or five years down the line, if we're here, we'll still be talking on the fact that we are working with some of those places to improve them. But we keep panning away. If any um, members or any, any ward members have got issues with certain individual uh, flats, problems that they're having, please highlight them to us and we will actually work with them. Uh, I will point out, and unfortunately, it is a Litchfield example, so I don't think I'm being too controversial, where we was getting bins completely contaminated. Vicky's team went board and took it up with um, our enforcement people to try to go back to the landlord and say, look, you're contaminating it, this is your problem, not ours, um, to try to address it, to actually get the, the, the landlords to take some ownership for their problems and to, to, to empty the waste at their cost at that level. Unfortunately, my service team decided to go and clear it out because it was a mess, um, which... You know, that's about the, they are doing the right thing by, by keeping the area clean, but it meant we're back at stage one with that with that, that occupant. Um, I will ask that we'll come back as well. I mean, there's an there's a, there's a area in town for the moment where the, uh, a new build, uh, multi-occupied area, where again, they are struggling for capacity because the landlord has not put in sufficient bin stores. Without the bin stores, we can't solve the problem. So I asked from our perspective, our team do a lot of work on that, but I ask for buy-in and support from, from members of, 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 of all. Of all. Uh, other things that are going on at the moment, food waste collections. Um, it, it has been announced as, uh, as legislation. As Andrew is aware, he had a letter land on his desk two weeks ago, no? Week. Week. Time flies. Um, so... The government have given money, capital money, for us to purchase vehicles and and caddies to, to introduce that new service, which needs to be in by March 26th at latest. Um, 
I think 635,000 that Tamworth have received to, to go towards that capital expenditure. Um, Litchfield's received 1.1 million. It's all been calculated uh, from outside the money that's been given. Uh, I do think as a joint way of service, we have to accept that that is one pot of money, 1.7 million pound to, to deliver the service. So there's a lot of work going on on that, and I fully expect that the projects will be taken to to, the various, to to both management teams. It will then probably come to scrutiny, so we can discuss the ins and outs about how we progress this this very difficult uh, this project forward. Um, I think Andrew's already made the comments about that. Comms has got to be absolutely spot on with this one. Uh, I promise you, it will be. Um, but that is a major change in our industry, which is about to uh, to come forward. Uh, we're also in the process of um, replacing the fleet, so over the next couple of months we will have papers that will go forward to yourselves to start discussing what's happening in terms of a you know, somewhere between a seven and nine million pound expenditure on fleet. Uh, the work is going on, the specifications are putting together, ready to get out to contract. Um, it sounds like a lot of money, but the reality is it's an ongoing cost year on year on. Um, but again, that, that is going on now. We, you may be aware we've got an old fleet which has been extended perhaps beyond its uh, my, my preferred length of, uh, length of time. Uh, but the work is happening and we should see a new fleet for April 25. Uh, but as I said, we, you will get briefings and you will go off to your, your, your cabinet for, for, for how we're spending everybody's money. Uh, we've already mentioned the launch of the recycling campaign. I will encourage, um, and I know TJ is not here tonight, Councillor Jay, uh, but I've had a chat with him on this, and we will look to invite members so they can actually see this campaign. Uh, it, it's good. It's, it, it genuinely is quite an impressive um, piece that, that Tracy Cross and the team have put together, and we would like to share it. So um, as TJ gets his team together and we end up with a portfolio holder, at that stage, I'll push to try to get everybody invited along. Um, there's general other work going on, workforce plans, um, round reviews. We don't rest on our laurels. I will. Um, you know, I, I, I've had a conversation this week with Litchfield about delivering in-year savings. Um, we do it automatically. We've just got over Christmas, so what we're actually doing now is we're saying, OK, what can we cut out? It's that time of the year. Can we drop around? Can we do that? It's a balance between dropping around and saving what can can be a fair number of thousand versus not actually affecting the service level. Uh, and it's a balancing act that we will continually monitor and continually do. Uh, we will be looking at an overall round review for the whole, the whole service. You do that every couple of years because of in, you know, inefficiencies become out in your rounds, basically because of property growth. And as you, you're fully aware, there's, there's been a fair amount of property growth over the two, the two councils. Uh, there's an ongoing review of the commercial waste service. That's certainly in the, I won't say it's into the long grass, but it's the, the priority will, will, will um, go before that. And there is a conversation around a citizen's app that's being considered, but Tamworth um, have something in place already, so that is a Litchfield product that's going on. But I think that is an overview of the main projects that are going in and the, and the performance we're having at the joint waste service. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. That was a really comprehensive report. Um, and from a personal point of view, my collections over Christmas went absolutely fine. There was no problem. What the day they told me they would be there, they were there. So that, that was really good. Um, with regard to the, the drop in the missed collections, is that because our teams are more stable? Is, is there something around there? I think the missed collections, we have got a stable workforce. Um, which which helps. Uh, the reality is, is what you've actually done is that there's a few things that and it, it, it's Vicky's teams have, that have got there. So what we're doing, we are monitoring day, on, on a daily basis missed collections. But you, you, put, you put little things in place so you actually start to manage the teams and speak with the teams and get them buying into the idea. So we're asking them, if a bin's not presented, that they actually report it. So we don't have the scenario where Andrew doesn't put his bin out and then brings in two hours later telling us we've missed it and we don't well, actually Andrew you didn't put it out mm. so that actually helps the figures um, but a lot of it is actually going back to the crews and saying well hang on we, we, we've got you know, 14 Church Street 
Mrs Smith, it's an assisted collection, why have you missed it? And it's going back to the team and actually asking those questions. And sometimes you find out, yeah, that's because of the lock gate, we can't get in there, okay, let's resolve that. Or it's because they've literally made a mistake, missed it, weren't aware. Um, and it's just that constant, not badgering on, but working with. It's the little things that you do on top of that, that when you've got these statistics, we, we share them with the staff so that, you know, the TV screen that went up in the canteen, not a great watch, uh, but what you do got, you, you may have, you know, the, the graphs up there at the moment with, our, with some of our figures and it's saying this is what you're doing with missed collections. And in fairness to the crews, people don't go to work to want to do a bad job. And if they can see that their missed collections are going down, they generally take a sense of pride with that. You also find those that are sort of, um, I won't say something wrong then, uh, that, that are getting told off or being discussed for missing collections, they don't want to stand out. So hopefully they then go back and address those issues. The difficulty is maintaining it because like all of us, it goes in cycles and when we, you know, we work on missed collections, but then we get excited about something else for a bit and we forget about that. So it, it, it does go circular, but, but it is, it's a team, it's a team approach and, and just little things to try and address them. That. I've just got a couple more things. Um, I'm one of your bad um, things because I haven't done my garden waste thing yet. I, I got online and I don't know what was the matter. It might have been the direct debit thing freaked me out because that hadn't been there before. So I haven't actually clicked the button. So I'm one who still needs to do it. Um, one of my questions then is, what is the difference? Do you know the actual difference in the number of properties that is, is making this? Um, with regard to the campaign, are we looking around schools? Because I think for this, children will work it all out and we'll make mum and dad sort this out. Yes. 100% uh, you buy into the schools. I've, I've got a bit of a pet hate, and this is, this is to a certain extent, it's a, it's a personal opinion. Uh, so I do stress it's a personal opinion um, based on my teenage kids. Um, Getting into the schools is a brilliant thing to do um, because, as you do say, kids come home from school and they hassle you and they say, Mom, what are you doing with that? And it starts to change behaviour and it works. My real pet hate is that teenagers, um, how should we say it, stop buying into it. And I think there's an element of teenagers buying into it and they actually get along those. And so, I run a couple of football teams and the number of kids that come with their single-use plastic and then bin that plastic at the end or leave it at the side of the pitch and then we have arguments. And I actually think there's an argument as well, not just it in the schools, but I think there's a slight tangent on this that we start to hit the colleges because that's the area where I think, so I, I think you've almost got this graph of, of great behaviour by kids that are influencing us. And then it drops off, but that drop-off is the next phase of adults that... I, I could be wrong, it's a personal view, but schools, 100%, that they are the right places to hit. My other thing was the, the food waste stuff that's coming in. Do we know yet how we will make it work? And replacing the fleet, I have somewhere in the back of my mind, and, you know, this could still be my brain fog, that we as a committee asked to have some information about what the thinking was around the kind of vehicles that we would be purchasing. Do you remember that? Does anybody remember? That? Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> okay, uh, food waste. Um, it's challenging, but it's law, so we're, we're going to bring it in. I've, um, I've had experience of running food waste services previous places there is a yuck factor attached to it there is no two ways about it initially that the people have to buy into um, however it does work and it can work so operationally oh Christ, i set myself up for a fall it is a relatively uh, straightforward operation in terms of actually how you operate it you go out there you've got a smaller vehicle you drive around with a two-man crew and they go out and they empty caddies and they throw it into the back of the vehicle it's quite a simple uh, quite a simple operation. The scenarios about where we'll get rid of it, there are contracts in place the county have put in place, so we have got outlets at anaerobic digestions to turn into 
uh, to turn it into energy and uh, the, the, basically the fertiliser that comes out at the other end. Um, there are challenges around the fact that it's probably going to put round about, I'm guesstimating around about 23 staff into the equation that will be required. There is another 11, 12 vehicles that will have to be purchased. You've got to park them somewhere. You've got to charge them. So all those kind of issues are going to come around. Um, but the operational side of delivering it, I actually think that the changes you made to a dual waste service operation was probably more difficult. The difficult thing with food waste is going to be customer um, engagement. Um, a service that doesn't operate particularly well is only going to get 25-30% engagement. If we do it well, hopefully we'll hit around about 50%. That has to be the aim about where we're going for. Um, the good news is uh, that if this becomes a national scenario, we will see what support we get from central government of, of, of a more national level to actually put this. Is this, this not something we can fail at then? Because it's a national um, in initiative. I suppose in perspective, I could get myself into trouble and we could fail. Um, we will deliver it in the same way we deliver the rest of our services. So we will offer a service. We've got a lot, a lot of work to do to make sure it's a successful service. So to get the kind of tonnage that we want to produce, um, we've got to do things well. It, 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 food waste is also a bit of an odd one uh, because what you almost want... You want to drive tonnage and get as much as you can, but then you want to see the tonnage drops. Now, that sounds counterintuitive, but what you're trying to do is you're actually going out there and Vicky puts the food waste in, and then when she sees how much she's throwing out, she starts to change her behaviour that leads to less food waste in the long run. Um, the, other, the other one, and I know Andrew's fully aware of this, as is, is Simon at Litchfield, is that the, the cost of taking food waste out of the residual bin uh, it, it's environmentally it's a win financially it's a win uh, but at the moment some of that saving sits with county and we need to make sure that that's equitable in terms of where it's uh, where and how it's funded yes um, so the staff go on Andrew sorry. yeah if I can just just come in at, at that point I think it's it, it'll be mandated from I think March, March 2026 yeah. So there's quite a bit of time to to to, uh, to, to, you know, to to understand exactly what it means. We've had um, provisional capital figures from government, which is going to pay for the infrastructure. The, the really big bit that's missing is the ongoing revenue um, ex expenditure, which is going to support this, um, because clearly it has been explained to us that it will be at no cost to districts as collection agents. Um, we, we take it for that that's what it means. Um, I think there's the, there is now a need, as we get more and more information, to uh, to start the options appraisal process and actually understand what it what it's going to look like, what it means, what it's going to cost, and then that can uh, you know go through sort of you know, go through this committee, go through cabinet, ultimately to actually agree a um, a, a way forward with it. It is a big change. Um, I think as, as as Steve's just said, it's logistically that's the easy bit. I think the difficult bit is is people's hearts and minds in actually doing it. Um, you know, it's it's it is going to be law, so you know we we, we have to do it, um, and we have to do it in in a, you know in certain fashions. So they're they're actually mandating separate food waste collection now, which is fairly explicit. Um, but yeah, so awful lot of work to to do. Um, a reasonably sensible time scale. So you know, depending on when uh, you know when when both organisations decide is the right time to to start it, um, but you know this has been in the wings for five or six years at it's least. Time, yeah. um, it's just taken that length of time to actually get a um, a firm piece of legislation come come through. Yeah, I mean it, it's a sensible thing. It's just the will, isn't it, to, to get it done. It, it's interesting because it comes at the same time as there is national adverts out about how much people waste and they're quoting figures of £60 a month, the average family wastes on, you know, on food. So it, it all fits in and 
it is a story we can tell because of that all fitting in. It's about the education, but it's also about this could save you money. It, it just depends if we need the tonnage, doesn't it, I suppose? If we're trying to talk people down from having the food waste. But, yeah, it's a good thing anyway to... Well, it's a good thing that it's going to the... Um, so centre that it is for the heat to well is it the heat to waste to heat or whatever you call it centre that it will end up at it goes to a place um Jay, it goes to a place called anaerobic digester where basically all the goodness and all the energy of that food as it drops down is is basically transferred in and converted into methane and then into gas and electricity so it, it, it goes into energy and then the, the, the concept being that then can actually do 15, 20,000 homes in that vicinity. And what the waste that's left over is fertiliser. That, that goes back onto the land um, to, to grow the crops. So it's actually quite a green, quite a green concept. It sounds as if every bit of it's good, doesn't it? There, there is no bad bit to this if it, once we get it in place. <laughs> Has anybody else got any questions? Or have I used it all up? Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, thank you. Um, Chair also asked about fleet, and yeah. yes, there is an ongoing issue. We, we're not at a stage where we can really... There's work going on with partners within Staffordshire to try to look at alternative energies and alternative uh, fuel sources, but it's not really at a stage where we can, I can present on that. We need to get the work done, and then what we'll do is we'll take to the appropriate places through to Andrew, Simon. Um, and then we'll bring it to council. Yeah. How uh, long have we got on that? The reality is um, various councils have signed up to net zero by 2030-2035. Um, and those are the targets we have to be working towards. I think it's fair to say now that coming from a transport background, the chances of you, well, the chances of you having a hydrogen or an electric fleet for 2025 is isn't feasible, if, if, if I'm brutally honest. It will be a diesel fleet, and then the next be, uh, set of fleet beyond that, that's when we all look at the options appraisal about what we can deliver. So Tranche is definitely looking at being the same, being diesel. Right? Of a similar nature. But, of yeah. course, better quality. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that report, then. We are now... And if you need to go now... That's fine. Oh, right, sorry. I, d I do need my, my teacher here. Sorry. Right, so we're asked to note the update on the performance of the operation service. And do we have any... Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Right. So can I ask for um, a mover and a seconder? All those in favour of noting them? Thank you very much. Oh, right. <laughs> Apparently you can't go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we're moving now into item eight, which is ending plastic <coughs> petition. Pollution. It's from a petition. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Right. So uh, just to remind the committee that at our meeting on the 13th of September 2023 we asked to look at the petition to end plastic pollution and we made some resolutions. Right, the council made some resolutions. Sorry, I, am, I have to apologise. I am still not quite with it. So are we asking for anything now or do we just want Hannah and Mark so, yeah. to... So we've got, we've got an update which we shared, which is what Steve gave us right. before with the so everyone's saying item 6A? Yeah, that yeah. was brought to the last meeting. And then um, Hannah and Mark are going to update on resolution 2, which is oh, right. yeah, what, what we're doing to ensure that public spaces are clean. Oh, right. Yeah. So I'll just reiterate that. We're asking Hannah and Mark to talk to us about ensuring that the public spaces are clean and free of plastic waste, please. That's okay. Thanks, guys. So, 
just just to give uh, the group an update um all of the waste uh, that uh, people dispose of or throw away or throw out of their windows on public open space is dealt with exactly the same so we don't um we don't t deal with plastic waste any different than we deal with any other waste that's um disposed of on public open space all of the litter um that is collected either uh, via litter picking routes or via the use of the public bins um is disposed of um it go, we, we take it to lower house farm and it's it's incinerated so none of the uh, the plastic waste that may well be contained within the litter bins uh, goes to landfill so it was it, it it's an interesting um question for us about um plastic contamination and and how we deal with it because we deal with everything in the same way so we don't kind of if we when when our litter pickers are walking around they they don't pick up plastic and put it in one bag and general litter and, and put it into a into a different bag so we we ensure that all of the public spaces are, are clear and free from litter whatever the litter is which is kind of i know we're a, we're a small point in the in the um a small cog in the, the whole issue with with plastic waste i mean personally um plastic waste um is an issue with the um the companies that uh, the packaging companies and the the industry that use plastic um to uh, you know to con to contain their, their 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 goods we definitely remove everything that is on the public open space so from that perspective whether we want to come back a bit later and have a conversation about whether we should be encouraging members of the public to um, recycle their litter when they're out and about by introducing potentially a different style of litter bin where, where members of the public can choose to put plastic and they can choose to put cans and they can choose to use general waste mm -hmm. is something that we may want to discuss moving forward. Um, from, from my previous life when I worked at uh, Telford and Reeking Council we we did um, adopt trials where we tried to um, introduce a new style of litter bin around the local centres and encourage people to to separate their waste the the biggest issue we had was when people turn out from the pub on a Friday night at half past ten and they've got a can in one hand and a kebab in the other they don't really look where they're where they're disposing of it so we we used to have significant issues where, as we talk about with contaminated with contaminated uh, recycling because obviously if we've if, if if the containers basically have they may have three or four different apertures so when the guys go and empty the bins they will take the bag of plastic out and but if that plastic is contaminated with other items it's um it's very difficult to um either separate it and you end up in those situations either disposing of it in a way that isn't recyclable um i don't know whether hannah wants to add anything and thanks mark i think it also comes down to the messages that that, that steve's alluded to and, and working collectively on the on the campaigns as well of encouraging people to bring potentially um reusable water bottles if they're out at sports pitches and things like that you know it's a it's a it's a known problem you know people might throw something towards a bin it doesn't go in the bin it's single-use plastic so how we can support that campaign and we can potentially extend that out and and share those messages with community groups and clubs as well i think who are who are using those facilities to encourage those those positive messages of actually reducing the amount of single-use plastic that people are using is is probably a key key way to go um but it would be a key consideration for us if we if we, we could potentially pilot some of these um bins that mark referred to chair um but we need to appreciate that there could be the risk of contamination and then that means that cannot go back into um, providing energy as, as Steve's described because it, it goes into a format which then creates energy on the back end because it would be contaminated and, and would have a, a different end result rather than going into that mechanism. Thank, thank you very much for that. I mean it's quite thought-provoking isn't it how this could work in an ideal world if everybody did what they should do took their 
plastics home with them. I mean, we do, but we just do. It's just something you either have the mindset for or not. I wonder if, if there's a possibility that we could look at some dual litter bins, but not across the board and have, you know, not have them outside the chippy where they'll be contaminated on a Friday night, but in certain places where maybe the users would be more likely to look at it as a, an, an either or. I'm thinking of maybe the castle grounds, you know, around where young families are, they might think better of the way that they're doing things. And, and if we only did it in a few places, it would be better than it all being contaminated. You know, I, I don't know. It's it's an idea, but um, it is a, it is a hard job. And you do keep the place very well um, clean. In fact, Tamworth itself isn't that bad. I think it's the county bits that let us down. <laughs> yes, Andrew. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's having had probably more years than I can remember of, of having this sort of rhetorical conversation. Um, I, I think it's absolutely right. We should try some you know some sort of recycling bins they, they've been successful in, in in some places they've been unsuccessful in, in in other places i think the bit that that is probably the, the missing link with that is is the constant comms around making it work and then explaining why we've only got them in a few areas and, and things like that but they are um, most people when presented with it will go you know oh, plastic i'll put that in there and put that in there so we've got to make sure they're in the right spots um, but we've got to keep pushing the message, and that's the only way it will be successful. And I think the, the downside is, inevitably, they are going to get contaminated. So people will see a bag being taken and thrown into the back of a truck, and another bag being taken and thrown in the back of the same truck, which then leads you to, well, why are we bothering recycling? Because it's all going in the same vehicle. So we've, we've got to try and get get over that uh, as well as part of the uh, part of the process but if we don't try we're never going to do it um, and it's morally it's the right thing to do it's, it's incremental steps and just trying to get trying to get citizen engagement and buy-in um, which is very difficult as, as we know but you know it's we, we've got to keep trying and I think the thing is we in this room will all have gone to conference centres where there is always several waste bins for different stuff. So it, it is that thing that we're used to it, and it, so it's the education around other people. Are you looking to make that a recommendation that we try also? Um, would would we be happy to ask that we could have a look at that? Yes, that please. So, so do we need some words? Some word. Yeah. So, but you, are you happy to? Or do you need it now? So, look at the feasibility of citing some dual use bins around the town in strategic places. On, on a trial. We yeah. On a trial yeah. Um, just what about with some, I'm just thinking about what Andrew was saying around the comms. With, well, uh, we're with yeah. the, the proper comms to explain. Yeah. But in better English than that. Hannah, did you want to? Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to concur. The team, the street team, team work very hard to keep our public open spaces clean and tidy and take great pride, as Steve has said, um, the, the Joint Waste Service do in, in terms of the best job they possibly can. And um, I know they work very, very hard to do that, so they should be commended in the work that they're doing. Thank you. Thankful for it. And as I say, it's just let down with other bits. Thank you. Just, just picking up on that theme, um, you know, thanks to the street scene, the guys work really hard, and thanks to the council for supporting the volunteer litter pickers in the town. I know I'm always pestering you, Mark, for stuff um, for for the many residents. Um, so it's nice that there's a town that you know the local authority really cares about the waste on the streets, and so do the members of the public. It's about us doing what we can to improve on that and helping you guys with um, the tools that you need. So do we have some? Um, well, I'll say if, if you're going to move that, um, we'll get a second. Yeah. If just, if Is everyone in favour of us taking that through? Can I see a show of hands? Just, can I just ask yep. the committee happy to delegate authority for you to finalise the word? Yeah. Oh, right. Are you happy for me to finalise the word and you're happy to delegate that? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Where are we now then? Um, so you're happy to, to yeah. leave that one for now? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so thank you very much for coming along. I know you, you, you may not have seen much, but we were 
anxious to understand how it all worked and we've got something out of this so that's really good thank you <clears throat> thanks very much um, as the officers leave then we're now going to look at the forward plan of Anybody in the committee got any items that they want to bring forward? Anybody got anything from it? No? Item 10 then, the working group updates. We still haven't met the migrant travelling community because of various issues. We will get to grips with that over the next few weeks and I haven't had any update from Ben about the HDV no, drivers no. he did say he'd um, come back to me um, so item 11 the work plan did you want to so I just wonder if you want to highlight about the local plan progression that we about the meeting oh um, right yes I've had some conversations with Leanne and Richard Richard Powell, Richard Powell. There's a local plan progression options, which is now ready to come to us. And it would be good if it didn't have to wait until March. So we were proposing to put in a ISAG meeting on the 19th of February. I think it's free in the diary, else we wouldn't have picked it yet, presumably. <laughs> and we're not now going to Amsterdam that day. <laughs> it's the beginning of the week. Yeah, so that sound all right? Nobody's going to... Fabulous. So we'll, we'll be putting that in and the stuff will be coming through from Richard. Um, um, that was just, just to say that we'll, we're going to email around the scope oh, proposal right. to the bulky waste item. Yeah. We'll just ask committee's feedback comments. So, so, so this, this um, scoping document is part of the new stuff that Leanne is doing for scrutiny um, committees. So this will be coming round to everybody for them to put their own personal yeah, bits on. Yeah, good yeah. to ask for the review of the book. Fabulous. Service. So look for Leanne sending you this form through, and if you can complete it and come back. Um, apart from that, is everyone happy with the work plan? Have you all had sight of it? Yeah. I'm happy that we've now got an extra meeting in, because, you know, didn't want a free February. We now go on then. Item 12, exclusion of the press and public due... Due to the nature of the final terms, we are now going to move it to a restricted session. And, oh, sorry, final items. Flipping it, it's dark in here, isn't it? We are now going to move it to a restricted session and ask the... Yeah, sorry, I'm this, ask the yeah. committee. This, I'm going to read that back. <laughs> so from here, yeah. that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities, executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England... Regulations 2012 and Section 100A, brackets 4, of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 3 of Part 1 of the Schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. Can we have a move? The, the, yeah, second Thank you, all those in favour. Yeah, let them all scuttle out. 